So I'm Dr. Hassan Al-Khalisi. I graduated back in 2013. Originally, I'm Middle Eastern from Iraqi descent. I grew up in Toronto. I decided to, to go to medical school, or actually transferred out from a different school into Xavier in 2009. Um, moved down here to Aruba, and I absolutely loved it. The people were great, the island was great. It just completely transformed my educational experience. The reason why I chose this school originally it's come such a long way now, is that I think I had a lot of diversity to offer for us, plus this island is incredible, and I saw the potential of where it's going, and clearly look where we are now, so we've done really, really good things. I ended up doing my residency at University of Pittsburgh Medical Center, did internal medicine there. I went on to do my fellowship at SUNY Upstate in Syracuse, New York. I am now an interventional pulmonologist, a critical care intensivist, and now I've started my attending hood. I'm at Eastern Carolina University in North Carolina. I'm the adult medical director for respiratory services. I'm the ICU regional director as well too. I have a big passion for academics, a big passion for research, and my main focus of interest from the pulmonary side of things is lung cancer, because I do all of those invasive procedures, um, and our thoracic oncology program is huge there. Past that, from the critical care side, I'm a big mechanical ventilation expert, and I work on acute respiratory distress syndrome, which if anybody was around during COVID those last few years, that blasted through. So that's my field of interest, and that's why I'm here. The reason why I want to come back and give is when I was young and going through school here, it seemed dark at times, but the light is there. You just have to push through. Everything is based on how much you put in. If you put in what you put in, you're going to get out what you get out. So that's why I want to come back and help because I feel like I have a lot to offer. I mean, being down here on the island, I, I've made lifelong friends. Uh, the island batchmates that I had that I've graduated with, we're still just as close as we were when we were down here on the island. So that was my main support that we had because we kind of went through the trenches together. You know, at that time, we weren't as, I guess, established as how we are here right now. So we had to figure a lot of that stuff on our own. But again, we all had the drive. Dr. Dubé, at that time, there was a different registrar that I was working with at that time. Everybody here was very helpful. They never made things hard. And I guess they were kind of learning the struggle with us as well too, but they never shied away or shunned away. They were really helpful in everything that we had to do, whether it was us getting new rotations and them signing off on it or helping us get through graduation, helping us through cost of everything, because you know how expensive medical school is. The support here was there and I feel like it's just growing. I mean, look, we're bringing people back every year. You can only do that with growth. Right. Without growth, this will never happen or exist. So I think that we were here in the years where we were fostering relationships and these relationships have just exploded. What better than a mentor? What role is there in medicine or in education without a mentor? Without a mentor, you are just a lost soul. I would love to be a mentor because I had mentors as I got through my training and these people have guided me. It's just, it's beyond healthcare. It's beyond taking care of patients. This is a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle that you choose because medicine becomes your first marriage. Everything else afterwards comes second and that's not easy to deal with. You don't actually realize it because when you're down here on the island, it's one happy island. But when you actually get back to the United States or in Canada, depending on where you decide to work, it changes. Your life changes. So I want to be a mentor to the people that are here, not just from the academic side, from the life side, because I don't feel like people understand the commitment that it takes, and that commitment is lifelong. So my goal is to foster relationships, be a mentor to these mentees, and hopefully get them somewhere. And I think if you look at somebody that went through the struggles, somebody that you know, had a good time down here on the island, but also focused on what they had to do to get through it, that's a role model. I, if I, that's what, when I went into my training, I saw somebody that I, I'm like, man, this person, I just saw how they handled the chaos of the intensive care unit. I want to be that person. That's how I fostered that relationship. So I would love that for the students here right now because there are lots of ways to grow and I just want to be there to water the plant. The first thing that I want to tell the students that are considering a career in medicine, being a doctor is awesome. And the reason why being a doctor is awesome is it's an art. If you wanted to just follow an algorithm, anybody can learn how to do that. But that's not why people go to medical school. You go to medical school to foster relationships with patients, with family members, within yourself, within your colleagues, within the community. You end up being a fabric of that community. The longer that you stay there and you build there, people will remember you. I tell my residents, fellows, and medical students all the time, we meet people in their most dire times. They will always remember us. We will never remember them. So always try to put a first impression on these people because they're seeing you in their worst. So they will remember you for your good. 
if that's what you do. And I think that Xavier offers the perfect balance of everything. Because when you come down here, you'll learn the love of the island and the love of the people. And I hope that goes into your heart. So when you get back to the other side, that you're able to share that with everybody that's there. And here now, where we are, you have every opportunity. So it's up to you. The opportunities are now there. There are no more excuses. So if you want to do it, if you take the bull by the horn, you're going to be able to get through this. I promise you that. It is there. So take the opportunity while you have it.